So one thing I could never get a clear answer on early on in my bodybuilding career was how to target back width versus back thickness. I remember guys at my gym saying that on lat pulldowns, you should go wide to get wide, but they didn't seem to have any real rationale behind that. Now, most people tend to think of vertical pulls like pull-ups as back width exercises and horizontal pulls like rows as back thickness exercises, but I wanna explore whether there's actually any truth to that, and if so, what effect can modifying your grip width and hand position have? So at first, let's tackle back width. I think it's important to recognize that the appearance of back width is gonna come from two main factors, your lat development and your waist circumference. The smaller your waist is, the better your V taper will be, and the wider your back will appear. Obviously, you can't alter your waist with training. You need a good diet for that. So when it comes to back width, we're gonna focus on optimizing growth of the lats. Now, most people know including a vertical pull like a pull up or a pull down is necessary for optimizing lat development, but not as many people know what grip to use for this purpose. So let's have a look at what the EMG activation data shows. And there are three studies I want to look at here. The first comes from Senior Relay and colleagues published in 2002, which compared two close grip pull downs, a neutral grip and a supinated grip to two wide grip pull downs to the front of the neck and behind the neck. And they found that for mean lat activation, the wide grip options came out on top with the wide grip pull down to the front of the neck outperforming the rest. However, the study was limited by the fact that the narrow grip conditions also used different wrist positions, meaning perhaps activation was lower with the narrower grip because subjects were using a neutral grip or a reverse grip, not because their grip was narrow per se. So eight years later in 2010, Luscatel improved this experimental design by keeping wrist position the same when going from wide to narrow. So they tested wide pronated, wide supinated, narrow pronated, and narrow supinated grips. And what they found was really interesting. It didn't matter if you went wide or narrow, but both pronated grips were significantly better than both supinated grips. Um, so this far, it really seems that all we can say for sure is that an overhand grip seems to work better than an underhand grip, uh, but perhaps both a close grip and a wide grip will work just about the same. However, this 2010 Lusk study had its own pretty glaring flaw. Uh, they used absolute loading rather than relative loading. Um, so it's possible that the reason the overhand grips came out on top is because it's simply harder to move as much weight with this grip than an underhand grip. And then as a result, the subjects were training closer to failure, uh, not because the wider grip is inherently more advantageous. So to settle the debate once and for all, enter this third 2014 study from Anderson et al, which compared three overhand positions, narrow, medium, and wide. This time each condition used relative loading. They found the medium grip to come out on top for a few reasons. First, six rep max strength was higher with the medium grip than wide grip, and also there was significantly higher concentric biceps activation with the medium grip, and there was also a trend toward higher lat activation with the medium grip as well. Uh, so based on this body of activation data, if your goal is to make your back as wide as possible, I think that there is a slight edge to using a medium grip overhand pull down at about 1.5 times shoulder width pulled to the front of the neck. However, because this EMG activation data is based on average, not individual results, I tend to only use this type of research as a first approximation since it can't say for sure what's gonna maximize activation of your lats on its own. So for that, we need to turn to biomechanics. Now let's think about it this way. When you use a close grip, you emphasize shoulder extension by bringing your arm down more in front of you in the sagittal plane. Whereas when you use a wider grip, you emphasize shoulder adduction by bringing your arm down more to the side in the frontal plane. Now, of course, the lats can perform both shoulder extension and shoulder adduction. However, since most rowing exercises like dumbbell rows, cable rows, and machine rows are already gonna hit the lats primarily through shoulder extension. I think from a programming perspective, when you do pull downs or pull ups, it makes more sense to focus on training the lats through shoulder adduction, which is gonna mean using a wider pronated grip most of the time. Now with that said, I think many trainees are under the impression that wide grips will only train back width and narrow grips are only gonna train back thickness, uh, but this actually couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, let's just take a look at this figure from the Anderson et al paper showing whole movement activation. You can see that the lats and the traps are both very highly active in the lat pulldown regardless of grip position. So while on average, you may get a slight edge from a medium overhand grip, as long as you're completing a vertical pull through a full range of motion with good controlled technique, then you're still gonna see significant improvements in back width and back thickness using any grip placement from one to two times shoulder width. Uh, so what about horizontal pulls like rows? 
Uh, most people are under the impression that vertical pulls are better for targeting back width and rows are better for targeting back thickness, uh, but this isn't necessarily the case. Uh, rows are actually amazing at targeting both width and thickness. And in this study from Lehman and colleagues, the seated row outperformed the lat pull down for both lat and trap activation. Meaning that if your goal is to have a thicker and a wider back, you really wanna make sure you're including a row in your routine. Uh, but the question is, is there a way to make the row emphasize back width or emphasize back thickness more by varying the grip? Well, for whatever reason, EMG data hasn't focused on grip width in the row like it has for a pull down. Um, so we're gonna need to rely on biomechanics to see if there's any difference. And here's where things get a bit counterintuitive because on a row, my recommendations actually flip. If you wanna target back width, a closer grip actually makes more sense because a closer grip is gonna target the lats more through shoulder extension. For example, on a cable row, using the V-bar close grip attachment is gonna allow you to more easily drive your elbows down and in, a cue that's gonna emphasize the lats over the traps. And on the flip side, a wider grip is gonna much more effectively emphasize transverse shoulder abduction and scapular retraction, getting the mid traps and rear delts much more involved in targeting back thickness. Now, when it comes to the bent over barbell row or pendley row, I think a more medium grip that's slightly wider wider than shoulder width with an emphasis on pulling the elbows back and out at about a 45 degree angle is gonna provide a perfect blend of lat and trap recruitment, making it an amazing overall back movement for both width and thickness. And you guys can check out my Technique Tuesday video on the Pendley row if you'd like a more in-depth explanation of the cues that I use there. Uh, so here is the quick summary. Uh, for vertical pulls like pull-ups and pull-downs, it seems like a 1.5 times shoulder width grip should be the sweet spot for optimizing back width but since activation differences are small, you should ultimately go with a grip that feels comfortable for you and that you can feel a mind-muscle connection with when appropriate and one that allows you to apply an overloading stimulus. And when it comes to rows, I think a closer grip will emphasize back width more, especially if you cue to pull your elbows down and in rather than straight back. And a wider grip is gonna emphasize back thickness more, especially if you focus on pulling the elbows back and squeezing your shoulder blades together. And to get a nice mix of both width and thickness at the same time, try to include a free weight barbell row using a medium grip and pulling the elbows back at a 45 degree angle. Uh, so try to keep all of this in context and avoid black and white thinking. Uh, simply finding a grip that feels comfortable for you and that allows you to execute the movement through a full range of motion with a strong mind-muscle connection is the most important thing. And then tweaks like these can help you emphasize and improve your specific weak areas. And also guys, I decided that for the launch of this video, I'm gonna run a quick flash sale on my back hypertrophy program, which condenses all this information down into a routine that has you hitting the back in the gym three days per week. As you guys can get that for 25% off or $14.99 on jeffnipper.com for the next week. And before we go, I wanna thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform that I've been using to run my own website, jeffnipper.com, for the last four years or so. And that's where I sell all of my training programs. And I think that their platform is great. I'm actually currently reworking the color scheme of my website and going from that uh, teal orange theme to more of a gray blue vibe. Uh, but I think that their website templates are all very aesthetic and easy to set up. And their analytics app is great for keeping track of website traffic, online store sales, and page views. So I use that pretty much every day. And if you ever run into any issues, their 24 hour customer support is always there to help. So if you're looking to get started with building your own website or running your own online store, then you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash nippered. And that's gonna save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys all here in the next one.